Hi and welcome to the Tristan channel and in this video I'll be talking about the film Prometheus and what was wrong with it with its concepts and touching maybe on little bits of Covenant as well. Quick lowdown, according to Ridley Scott the engineers created mankind, visited our planet, uh, taught us how to build etc then left us whilst telling us where to one day find them when we were ready. However, they saw that we were becoming violent and savage, so sent an ambassador, who apparently was Jesus, according to Ridley Scott, to try and correct our path. We killed this ambassador, and so an engineer's ship was commissioned to go to Earth and purge all mankind. This went wrong and the crew got killed by some unknown entity before the launch was uh, before the launch possibly an ultra ultra morph the problem is despite ridley scott's idea of the engineers etc and the creation of man the problem is the film and the film's title is contradictory to what was intended You see, the film implies we were a mistake. The film title is important because Prometheus was a god who was punished by Zeus for stealing fire from Olympus and giving it to man. This is a story even told by Wayland in his speech towards the crew. The mural on the wall implies that the deacon alien was what they were working on with the black goo. Like Ash said, the perfect organism. Like Ash, they revered it like a god of perfection. This is what David learns and completes in Alien Covenant, which in that film is a, again a contradiction because David is said to create the xenomorphs despite the fact the engineers were already working on it. If the film was meant to be a parody of the Bible's the biblical story of Genesis, then it should have been called Alien Genesis, not Prometheus, because the significance. And God created man in his own image. <clears throat> if so, the film title implies that the engineer was a rogue engineer who stole, just like Prometheus, the fire, or in this case, the black goo, from the gods to create man. A creation that wasn't meant to be. That's why the rest of the engineers, or the other engineers, wanted to go back to Earth to undo this, of which David flip the, flips the coin and does it to them on one of their planets. This is why Shaw was confused why with the with the engineers why create them why create man then destroy them despite behind the scenes concept the film and title gives the impression that there were two factions of engineers those who wanted to evolve into the perfect organism the deacon and become in essence a god and then the <coughs> other half wanted to play god and create life. And yes, it also does fit the parable of man who then who then creates AI. In the alien universe, the Wayland Corporation creates androids who at some point tried to take over or replace humans for, for being imperfect and were therefore de and decommissioned them or made them less perfect. Hence why Call in Resurrection is one of the last gen androids who were perfect. This equation of creating and being replaced by one's creation is reflected in both the engineer's work and with Wayland's work with David. In Covenant, David believes this sentiment. Also, if the engineers created us intentionally 
as mankind grew savage, then yes, you wouldn't want that running rampant around the universe. However, when they decided or wanted to destroy us, this was planned during a pre-interstellar point in Earth's history. So we didn't pose any threat. So surely they'd think we'd wipe ourselves out. Is the problem why we go to great, so why go to the problem of going to great lengths to destroy us when our violent nature would do that for them? However, with all this, they could have gone down a darker path. Just as with David needed hosts, they could have done it so that they needed live specimens to experiment it on, so created us for them to do just like David. The engineers would then drop the black goo on mankind, and the engine and and the engineer was angry because the lab rats, humans, got loose by going to space. You see, in order to create a deacon, a human would have to get infected, e.g. especially a woman, um, then gives birth to the trilobite facehugger, which then latches onto an engineer to then create a deacon. See, humans are a part of the equation, because on its own, the black goo doesn't mutate the engineers. It kills them, meaning it wasn't it was meaning it was engineered to force humans and other life forms to mutate this also this is also supported by what david said it doesn't disintegrate you like an engineer it creates a parasite that multiplies also even though not confirmed or stated it's interesting that the muriel alien looks like a queen to to some of the fans because as you look at it, it looks like it has a crown. So, according to Ridley Scott, David created the Xenomorph, despite the way the films are written or laying out. The engineers, you know, it makes it look like that the engineers already started the work or the quest for the Xenomorph, and then David came along and perfected or achieved it. However, my other problem with Prometheus is, for example, in real, in, in real life, you would not go into deep, unexplored space without a security detail, especially if you're a company that's invested trillions of dollars into it. Even in Star Trek, they uh, Star Trek, sorry, they have starships that have onboard weapons for encountering hostiles on away team missions. In Covenant, they correct this issue and ha do have armaments. Also, before I forget, another sentiment of creation, replace, replacing or outgrowing the creator, is the emp is empath empathized in Covenant. So, sorry, by David in Covenant, he, he said, just as androids who were superior and outgrow mankind, but also that androids were better because they do not die of old age, etc. David saw himself more pe perfect than humans and that humans should snuff it although despite what he did to Shaw he loved her because she was kind I think to a degree David may have been less harsh or a dick towards people if humans didn't treat him as a piece of a piece of dirt or a lesser thing and just as we try to destroy AI, the engineers wanted to destroy us. However, either Ridley Scott's intention was true or there were two factions. Because why because why tell your children to come find you, then you want to destroy them? Either way, it's not made very clear and seems contradictory. It would have made more sense to keep it as David implied, just as an experiment, nothing more. It's a shame that AVP isn't canon because that would also make Wayland Utani's partnership interesting. For example, Wayland started the 
the research on the xenomorph and from AVP2, Utani started the predator research and that would make sense later on in relationship of their merger and have it as two opposing races, engineers versus Yelcha. It could also be adapted so that engineers gave us life and the predator gave us violence and warfare. I do like the fact though that they drew upon real cave paintings as inspiration for theirs and their film and playing on the ancient astronaut idea. And also the stars very much look like the Pleiades constellation. Also, the other problem with the Prometheus film is the stupidity of the scientists. Pardon me. Not only do they risk contamination, but also forbid any firearms and touch and piss about with some unknown, threatening, behaving, looking snake creature. In Prometheus, Shaw tells the crew, the engineers created us, but no one believes her. I would have argued, even if they didn't uh, create us, it would be still, they still may have the answers to a lot of other things, to what we seek, and also how can they dismiss the fact that primitive cavemen who drew these pictures knew of the star system that they were now in, um, arriving in. Even if I was someone who didn't believe her, I would find it hard to deny the evidence of the fact of knowing the location of a star system hundreds of light years away. So there's still that M that would be still there. It does do a good job with David, though. You can see signs of what he's like early on in the film. He also had utter contempt for Wayland, who, despite being a father, treated him as an inferior despite being superior in many ways to the one who made him. When the crew was asleep, he has time to walk around and become even more self-aware and decides early on to dabble in the engineer's work and has a bizarre relationship with Shaw. He seems to love her because she is kind but realises he needs a human test subject and kills her. However, as she is see, uh, however, uh, however, she is seen as the queen, he honours her in a twisted way by making her so. David annihilated the engineers as a gift to Shaw. When she balked at his genocide, David began using her as a specimen in his genetic experimentation attempting to make her more than human despite his efforts at keeping her alive during this process she eventually perished david then made a grave for her in the citadel's garden david would subsequently honor shaw's death regularly through a ritual years later daniels found her preserved, dissected, and severely mutated body in David's alien study room. Also, there's a scene in Prometheus where they they're running, sorry, running from the crashed ship, and you're like, why are you running in the same direction that it's falling, and not to the other side of it? It's just silly. Don't get me wrong, it was an okay film, just not brilliant as it could be as it could be, you know. I like Covenant more because it was really it was really good compared to the first one. Um how and it was really good how David contacted the government with a transmission. This fits with the corporation always knowing about it in, in the first in future alien films. Um Will there be a third? despite planning four movies which was exploring AI apparently according to what it's got and more of the, and less of the xenomorph it doesn't look promising also with Alien now belonging to Disney it's hard to say which direction it would go also I'd like to stress the cast were very good in these films as well 
it would have been interesting how it all leads up to the first Alien film because the space jockey in Alien 1 is essentially an engineer. And if so, what happened to David, etc. after Alien Covenant? Because also they have to explain how the jockey got the eggs or was carrying eggs and not black goo. Surely the jockey would have been David. Now that would have been an interesting idea to do instead of a space jockey. I could spend hours picking through these films, but uh, critics have done that for me. Like I said, the cast was good and it wasn't their fault. It was just bad writing especially with Prometheus. Overall, I liked Covenant better, and that's not because of the Xenomorphs. Um, does it ruin the alien by being created by David? Not really. All he did was is experiment with the nature of the black goo on life forms. It also adds irony, irony to the whole alien franchise. Man creates David, David creates Xenomorph, the Xenomorph destroys mankind. I do like Walter. It was funny when he uh, mentioned to David, who thought he was dead after stabbing her in the neck, that there have been, there have been some upgrades done you know, since David's creation. For example, regenerative body and, and such. In many ways, Walter is superior, although David out the two in a many a manner of speaking has a soul or a ghost in the machine i do wonder if walter is still alive because he can regenerate ridley scott said he is 100 percent dead yet how if david could as many fans have pointed out if david could survive having his head torn off then what can walter survive being that he can also have the added bonus of regeneration Bit of a contradiction would make more sense if he was heavily damaged also uh, heavily damaged water enough simply just to buy him time to escape the planet but not actually kill him this is also why daniels finds it odd that walter now who now he's pretending sorry uh, that walter who is actually david pre pretending is not actually healing when they're back on the ship also despite the implications on the mural on the wall Ridley Scott elaborated late in development that he had decided to have David be the sole creator of the Xenomorphs. Motivated by his by, by hubris and genocidal disdain for both humans and the engineers, with the Prato, Protomorphs being an immediatory stage between the Neomorphs and the Xenomorphs, seen elsewhere in the series. This is supported by the Advent short film in which David documents some, some of his experiments with the chemical pathogen and expresses the intent to use the Covenant's colonists as test subjects to perfect his creation. This film is basically the recording he sends to the Wayland yutani company and just like Shaw he says he needs to perfect his queen of which Daniels is his next intended experiment the link to this short video this short film that they made is in the description below but anyway I would give Prometheus five to six out of ten um because it's some of the ideas but not actually the story now and Covenant seven or eight out of ten so anyway, that's just some of my thoughts or problems I had with it. At least let me know what your thoughts are about them in the comments below. So anyway, with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.